Shamrock was built for the America's Cup Challenge in 1930. And we launched and raced Shamrock with the rest of the English fleet for two months. And then we came back to Gosport and we got, got ready to sail across the Atlantic. We had very strong headwinds most of the way out, southwesterly winds. And we had a, we had a tidy amaran before. We got into the Azores and she was leaking badly. And here yeah, we had it repaired and we sailed again for America. We were 26 days crossing and of course it was rough weather most times and we were wet through and the ship was wet through too. We couldn't find any dry places in her so we had just had to keep on what we had and get what rest we could. We were four hours on duty and four hours off duty all the way out till we got to America. And we, were, we were lucky to get any cooked food at all. And with all, with all due, to, due respect to the cooks, two cooks, bless them, they did try to cook up something, And but most times it was sandwiches on deck. They weren't a good seaworthy boats at all. I would rather have went over in my boat, our daddy, who was less than half the length, because she was built for it. She was built for weather. But these boats were fil- built for speed. And they were so fine on their ends that in the plunging sea, they would dip their bows underwater, their stern would come up, and when they went the other way, the stern would go under and the, the bow would come up, you know, so we had to keep in the middle or else you could be washed off <laughs> in bad weather. When we got to uh, off Newport, Rhode Island, we had been 26 days battling it out across the Atlantic. But to see all the people and the craft that came out to meet us, you know, it was really wonderful. And we were thankful to get in and get some dry gear in the English waters. We were racing against four or five ships, but when we got to America, of course, there was only two of us. That was the American boat, Enterprise, and and us racing. So it it was comparatively easy racing, actually, out there, thankfully. But uh, there was so much difference in the build of the boats. The way that the ship was built and her fittings, um, all the fittings to handle the ship, there was three quarters of the crew below deck most of the time with they were working winches to tighten the sails and the rent, the running gear, rigging and all that. And we were 22 hands and they were 30 hands on the American boat. But she was so easy to handle with all this equipment. It was like putting a Ford car against a Rolls Royce with the money they spent. Do you know the mass of that sailing yacht cost more than the whole of Shamrock together? We hadn't a chance. And in sailing, she outsailed us, which... The main point of sailing, of course, is sailing against the wind, on a wind, as they call it. And she would outpoint us. Each time we got on a wind, she would come up under our lee and out on our weather bow. We weren't in the same street. The the American boat was a much faster ship. There's no doubt about that. So we had to come back. I wouldn't say we had our tails between our legs because we knew after the first two races (laughs) what we could expect. My name's David Pingelli, and my father was A.J. Pingelli, the famous old blue fisherman who sailed to America in the America's Cup in 1930. And this is an original Burgee from that race, uh, which was presented to father and the rest of the crew, I think, by the old sailmaker, who used to probably make a few bar out of it. But it is an original Burgee, and Tommy Lipton Shamrock, and I'm very proud to have it, and I'm keeping it in my shop down here on the quay.